Welcome back to Web Development with AngularJS and Bootstrap. In the last section, we looked at using Angular and Bootstrap to tell the user that a particular form field is required. In this section, we'll be looking at the core of Angular's single page application framework, the ng-route module. The ng-route module allows us to show many pages to the user without the browser having to refresh the web page. Let's start by looking at the routing example in the Angular docs. Open up this page and scroll down to the example at the bottom. This is the dollar route service in the ng route module. In this example, there is one main page, the index.html, two templates, book and chapter, and the JavaScript page. Looking at the index page, we can see some fairly familiar attributes. There's the controller attribute and some bound attributes down the bottom. The new attribute here is this ng-view attribute. First of all, we're going to see this in action straight away. I'm going to switch between the Gatsby and Moby links. As you can see here, it says that the, the controller is book controller and the book ID is Moby. But as you've probably noticed, there's nothing in the index page that would display this content. The trick here is in the ng-view directive. It is loading up the content of the route defined by the link we clicked on. If we now look over to the book.html template, we can see where the controller and book ID HTML and bindings are defined. If we now click on the Moby chapter 1 link, we can see some new text that is defined in the chapter.html template. You're probably wondering what's the difference in between this and, say, using a tabbing plugin to change what's being shown. The first advantage is that we can use dynamic URLs to load data. If we look over at the index page, we can see all of these hrefs here that have different URLs. And if we click on them in the example, we can see the string values of the URL are being loaded into the params variable. It's here, compared to here. So you see key equals value and key is value in the params. The second advantage is that we can separate the logic for each page into a separate controller. And as we've seen, the templates allow us to separate the display HTML for each page as well. While this doesn't sound terribly useful right now, in larger projects it is a lot more useful. Right, now let's have a look over at the controller set up in Script.js. As I mentioned before, we can see that there are three controllers. One for the main page, and then one for each different template, book and chapter. They are fairly basic in and of themselves, so we'll look at the first new section down here, the config section. This is one of the two functions that run when a module is loaded. As we can see here, the config function is being used to set up the route provider. And as we can see, there are two when functions being called. These correspond to the URL of the links we saw in the index page. We can interpret this as follows. When the URL ends with forward slash book forward slash some string, which is stored, will be stored in the book ID variable in the params, we load up template URL book.html and load it with the controller book controller. Don't worry about the resolve option for now, we'll come back to it later. Okay, so now we have a basic idea of routing, let's add a basic second page to our app. First, we have to include the ng route module in our HTML. This has two parts, the first being the source file, the second is to load it into our module. Now let's move our current code into a template and our content into a subcontroller. First let's create a controller called user control. We'll move all of our previous code into here. We'll just cut and paste and don't forget to set up our controller again. Next we create a new file called user.tpl.html and move the form from our index page into there. Again we'll just cut paste, then fix up the tabbing. 
Back in our index.html, we'll add the ng-view attribute to our container class, where, which originally contained our HTML content. Lastly, to get everything up and running, we need to get the config function set up correctly. To do this, we're going to inject two more providers into the config, first being route provider, the second being location provider. Next, we'll add our version of the routing from the example page before we define route provider on a when. We'll go forward slash login as our URL. We define the template URL and the controller. Lastly, we add an extra function call called otherwise and set that if basically this defines what happens when none of the other route provider whens are matched. We'll get this to just redirect to the login route. Lastly, we're going to turn on the HTML5 mode. This gives us nice URLs to look at in the example. Now, if we load up our page now, we can see that our page has been set up to use routes. And if we inspect the element here, we can see that everything has been put inside the element with the ng view in it. In conclusion, we have learnt what the ng-route module does, why we would, want, we would want to use it, and how to set up our application for use in it. In our next video, we'll look at how to add a second page and use an event to load it up.